Hello and welcome to a new video for our training. Today we are going to do more testing of signals on CAN communication. But first uh, I'm going to show you how to use the trace items in um, VETE Studio. So um, for the trace items you have here traceability and documentation. Here you can display your trace items, traceability matrix and import trace items. You can download um, plugin for doors to export automatically your trace item. I will put the link where you can find on Vector's website uh, in the description of this video. Um, but for this example, I adapted an existing trace item from um, Vector um, sample configurations. I will import it. So you can import, I will show you how to import, import trace items. Here you open and I save it here. This is the file VTITSO. I will open and you can uh, merge or delete or choose here what op op option do you want. I will hit OK and I have tr uh, three test items imported. So those are my basically are my requirements which I'm going to test. I'm still going to test the easy.can or sample configuration. So here we have engine speed and hazard. I created some dummy requirements. So first it's engine speed requirement. You can see in the description, the engine speed signal shall support values between zero and 3050. And so on, we have three requirements. We are going to create test cases for each of one, each of them. And um, I will show you how to use uh, the the trace trace items. So let's create a new test case. I will cover the first requirement, engine speed. I will say check engine speed speed. Okay. Uh, I will add here a trace item. Of course, you can add multi multiple trace items, but. Uh, now we are going to focus only for one. We are going to test this one. So the engine speed signal shall support values between 0 and 3500. Uh, if you we if you are going to look here, we can see in the control that we have the interval of the values. So this is what we are going to test. We are going to create a boundary value test case. So we'll try to uh, maybe combine with the uh, equivalence partition. So I will take a, a value in the middle of the the boundary values, the interval. So let's try. Uh, let's start. Add a preparation. I'm going to add a preparation. Um, here I'm going to set the engine engine state switch. I will set it to one to turn on the engine. Let's wait. One second, and this is our precondition. I will add another command here, and I will use the set command for this example. And we are going to set the engine speed entry. So, engine speed entry, we are going to set it zero first. The first uh, value I'm going to take it zero. Uh, I'm going to do only the positive test case here. You can do the negative test case to see if minus one. It's uh, what happens in this case, but for this uh, scenario, I will take only the zero. So I could say here in the caption set engine speed equal to zero um, and uh, await value match. I will put here. I will check the signal engine speed if it's equal to zero. Here I need to put 100 at least milliseconds because the cycle time of this message is 100 milliseconds. So I will put 110 milliseconds to wait for this uh, value to change. You can check this box, wait for signal updates. Um, if you want to, to check the update of the signal, but in this case we are not going to check it because the default value is zero. So it will fail if you do this here. Um, and. Uh, Let's put here another wait, maybe two seconds, just for the purpose of having 
um, the, the test not so fast. Uh, I think I will put a comment. Let's put a comment here. Check engine speed zero. Okay. Um, yes. And let's try insert. No. Um, put them again here. Copy paste. Let's try if 10 to check the 10. Um, value 10 for the boundary values. Um, and of course we can check it. I will um, check it for, let's say, 2000 to be a value in between. Okay, I will check it to be equal to 2000. Um, I need to change it here. And um, yeah, I will try another another value in the trace item I think it was 300 let's try 3 300 3000 sorry 3000 and that's it for this example you can check 3050 and yeah that's so you can take more values if you want to be more specific but for our test case I think this is sufficient and I will add a completion for our test case. Um, I will set the engine state to zero. So turn on, turn off the engine state. I will build my test unit. Um, I've already imported here. I will try to execute the test case. So to be sure that uh, it works. You can see here the value changes 10, 2000, and 3000. And of course, our test case is best. So, um, yes, you can see this the test report here. We set the value to zero. We check it's equal to zero, 10, 2000, and 3000. So, the test is best. I will go to the next, next um, requirement, which I need to test, engine speed 2. When engine speed signal is, is set, the value should, should appear in the RPM display. So we have this panel here, and I think you saw that the, here the, the RPM engine speed is displayed. So we need to check this too. So um, I will add another test case engine speed um, display let's say like this I will add here the trace item so in this video the focus is on signal testing and trace items so that's all that I will do I add here in the test case so you can add whatever you want I will put the engine speed here requirement 2 I will copy the preparation from here. I think only those commands. So add the preparation. Here I will add my preparation. Um, I'm going to copy the engine speed. Let's try it. We are going to insert the command and let's try to set it to 1000. Uh, Okay, and uh, for checking the display, I will going to use um, tester, tester, test validate tester confirmation. So you can use this function. You ask here the question: Is the speed RPM one thousand displayed? In the heading, um, it's just the heading speed display. Here, the press button, you can put 0 or 1. Uh, 1 is for yes. I want to hit yes button. 
you can check the help for more details here and um, yes I think I forgot to put a weight here uh, we can uh, put a weight to be sure let's wait 100 milliseconds um, and I will copy and paste those again um, try let's try it for uh, 3000 no 2000 I will check it for 2000 uh, and again for 3000 let's see I'm going to take three examples so usually you need to test as many as values as possible I will add in again a completion and set this switch to zero. So turn on the switch. And that's it, our test case. So let's check this test case too. I will start the simulation and I have the engine speed display. You can see the, the RPM is set 1000 and here it's the, the arrow. I will hit yes yes 2000 and 3000 yes so the test test case it's best so this is a semi auto test case i use the function test validate tester confirmation for the interaction with the tester this is really useful in um, those um, semi auto test cases and the last example for here we have the hazard those um, the hazard light shall flash between 500 milliseconds from on to off. So this switch is from on to off in uh, 500 millisecond. I will add another test case hazard check. I will put a trace item here to have it. I will uh, copy my preparation. Is the same. The same precondition we have. Okay, uh, insert the command. Of course, I will use again the set command, and I will use the sysvar hazard hazard light switch. So I will set this to one. In this case, it will turn on the hazard. Um, here we have the hazard hazard light switch, and this will turn on on the on the signal. And uh, I will put here a weight value match. Um, I will check the uh, flashlight. Uh, the flashlight here to be equal to one. When first time I will put the timeout. Uh, 1000 because I don't know exactly when it will be set to 1 but for the next check I will put it equal to 0 and put here 500 let's say 510 milliseconds to have a little tolerance here but this is just one check I want to expand it to let's say check it for 20 times so I'm not going to copy paste this for 20 times times I will insert here a 4 so how to use the 4 uh, command the loop value you put it e, let's see e start value 0 to 20 let's try it increment 1 by 1 so you can put 2 by 2 or 3 by 3 or how do you want and in the in in your uh, body of the 4 you can put your uh, commands I will uh, Put here now I can do it like this because I found the first value of one so it will it'll be one zero one zero one zero and so on so on um, and just try it uh, check it for 500 milliseconds um, uh, I will sorry I will add here a completion to yeah here I, I can um, 
hazard light switch, I can put this to zero too because uh, it, it's part of the the post condition of our test case. So I, I just use the one uh, one set command to put two system variables to zero. So let's build and try the test case. Hope it works. The hazard check. I will play. So you can see it's one zero one zero. You can see the lights here on the the car, in the, the display, and here in the data you can see. And our test case is still green, so uh, it works. So this is how you can test an intermittent signal using a four and a weight uh, value. And in the end, uh, those are our test cases to cover those three trace items, our requirements. What we can do now, we can see the traceability metrics. So if you display the traceability metrics, you can see here, here your test specification, static requirements. This is the requirement. And here you can see your test case and you can see which test case covers which requirement. So really easy, you can export it to Excel. Uh, so here it's the same. You will have all your requirements, which test case covers each requirement. Of course, you can have multiple requirements linked to one test case, one test case, or you can have multiple test cases linked to uh, one test case linked to to one uh, more requirements. You can see here you have test cases total, test cases linked active test cases, and you have the design coverage of trace item, it's 100%. If you have here another requirement and you don't have test case for it, you'll, you will have 75% coverage. So I think this is really useful to use for the, the quality of the project and the test uh, documentation. So this is how we use the trace item and of course more on um, how to test um, signals on the CAN bus.